So an important extension of the whole number system occurs when we expand to including what are called signed numbers. And we'll introduce them this way. We'll make the following definition. The additive inverse of a written minus a is the number that satisfies the equation a plus the additive inverse is equal to zero. Now if you've seen this before, you might be tempted to read this as negative a. And while it's true that this is the same as negative a, how you speak influences how you think. And so it's useful to read this as additive inverse of a because it reminds you that this plus a is going to be equal to zero. We'll introduce a few other quick definitions. The whole numbers, together with their additive inverses, form the set of integers. And these are both definitions. They're both very important to understand. Less important, but extremely useful, is the following theorem. Addition of the integers is both associative and commutative. And remember, the importance of that is that any addition can be rearranged in any order that we want. And finally, an important idea in mathematics and in life, you can have anything you want as long as it's paid for. Let's see how that works. Suppose we want to find 12 plus the additive inverse of 3. So we know that the additive inverse is the thing that's going to satisfy number plus additive inverse is 0. And so that means we know that 3 plus the additive inverse of 3 is going to be equal to 0. And what this means is that if we can somehow get a 3 into this expression, we can simplify it using this definition of the additive inverse. And we actually have a 3 buried in here. Since 12 is equal to 9 plus 3, the equality means that we can replace 12 with 9 plus 3. So we'll do that. We know that addition of the integers is both associative and commutative, so we can do this in any order that we want. We want to do this in the order that makes use of the fact that 3 plus the additive inverse of 3 is equal to 0. So we'll add these last two terms together to get 0. And 9 plus 0 is equal to 9. And we might make a quick note. 12 plus the additive inverse of 3 is equal to 9. Meanwhile, the same numbers, 12, 3, and 9, are related by 12 minus 3 is equal to 9. And what this suggests is that for any integers a and b, a plus the additive inverse of b is equal to a minus b. So we might take 8 plus the additive inverse of 3, our theorem says that if I add a number and its additive inverse, it's the same as subtracting. And so this is the same as 8 minus 3, or 5. How about 3 minus 12? To subtract 12, we need to have 12. But if we don't have 12, we only have 3. Well, remember, you can have anything you want as long as it's paid for. We note that 3 plus 9 is equal to 12, so if we add 9, we'll have a 12. But we have to pay for it. We need to subtract a 9 to keep our expression the same. So 3 minus 12 becomes 3 plus 9 minus 12, and then the bill for the 9 comes due, and we have to subtract 9 at the end in order to keep our expression the same. And now we invoke our order of operations. We have to do addition and subtraction from left to right. So we'll take care of 3 plus 9 first. And the rest doesn't change. 12 minus 12 is 0. And the rest doesn't change. And, uh-oh, now we're trying to take 9 away from 0. If we couldn't take 12 away from 3, how can we take 9 away from 0? Remember our theorem works both ways. a minus b is the same as a 
plus the additive inverse of b. So 0 minus 9 is the same as 0 plus the additive inverse of 9. And because we're adding 0, this is just going to be additive inverse of 9. And once again, we might make the observation the numbers 3, 12, and 9 are related. 12 minus 3 is 9, while 3 minus 12, what we just found, is the additive inverse of 9. And so this suggests another theorem for any integers a and b. a minus b is the same as the additive inverse of b minus a. To find 7 minus 15, our theorem says it's the same as the additive inverse of 15 minus 7. Well, 15 minus 7 is 8, and so our result is additive inverse of 8. What is important is that you will very rarely only ever have to do one thing. More often than not, you'll have to combine several things, and so being comfortable with the combining and recombining of different ideas is an essential part of mathematics. So, for example, let's say I want to add 5 plus the additive inverse of 8. Well, we have two theorems at our disposal. We'll have many more by the end of the day, but right now we know that for any integers a and b, a plus the additive inverse is the same as a minus b, and also a minus b is the additive inverse of b minus a. So let's see which of these applies. 5 plus the additive inverse of 8, well that looks like this first theorem, and so we know that we can rewrite this as 5 minus 8. Unfortunately, barring some creative accounting, I can't subtract 8 from 5. Fortunately, we do know that for any integers a and b, a minus b is the same as the additive inverse of b minus a. So I'll rewrite this additive inverse of 8 minus 5, and I do know what 8 minus 5 is. That's equal to 3, and so my final answer, additive inverse of 3. So let's put our theorems together, 4 plus the additive inverse of 9. Adding an additive inverse is the same as subtracting, so this is 4 minus 9. But I can't subtract 4 minus 9. But I have a theorem that says that a minus b is the same as the additive inverse of b minus a. So if I can't find 4 minus 9, I can find the additive inverse of 9 minus 4.